Rising temperatures could be linked to an increase in diabetes cases. A recent study shows that an increase in cases of type 2 diabetes may be linked to global warming, including 100,000 new annual cases in the U.S. alone. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, about one out of every three Americans will develop type 2 diabetes. A study published in the journal BMJ Open Diabetes Research and Care found that as the average annual temperature rose by 1 degree Celsius, the number of diabetes cases rose by 3.1 per 10,000 people. Researchers suspect the rise could be due to the inactivity of brown adipose tissue, a natural body fat that produces heat from burning the fat stored in organs to keep the body warm when temperatures drop. If temperatures stay warm, the inactivity of brown adipose tissue can increase fat stored in organs, causing glucose intolerance and diabetes. According to the World Health Organization, about 422 million people worldwide suffer from either type 1 or type 2 diabetes. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Getting warmer? Middle East and North Africa soon to become uninhabitable. A group of researchers believes temperatures in the Middle East and North Africa will rise dramatically over the course of the 21st century. The research suggests even if Earth's average temperature increases by 2 degrees Celsius, summer temperatures in the Middle East and North Africa will increase more than twice that. The temperature could rise to 46 degrees Celsius during daytime by mid-century, and it could be as high as 50 degrees Celsius at the end of the century. Also, heat waves could occur 10 times more often than now. The hottest period lasted for about 16 days on average between 1986 and 2005. However, these areas will experience 80 days of extreme heat per year by mid-century, and up to 118 days by the end of the century. The increasing air pollution caused by desert dust storms could make the environmental conditions intolerable, forcing people to migrate. Reducing carbon emissions could prevent more than 295,000 deaths in the U.S. The gradual effects of global warming have mostly failed to motivate many into making life-altering changes in the here and now. But what if we told you there's evidence that acting now might eliminate some pretty dire short-term consequences of climate change? According to a team of researchers from Duke University and the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies, slashing carbon emissions won't just reduce global warming, it could also prevent tens of thousands of premature deaths. A 2 degrees Celsius increase in atmospheric warming is usually considered the threshold at which the changes wrought by climate change, such as drought, flooding, declining fish populations, and the spread of tropical diseases, will become more than humans can handle. The two largest sources responsible for climate change in the United States are the transportation and energy sectors. In a research paper published in the journal Nature, researchers modeled what would happen if emissions in both sectors were significantly reduced by 2030. The study showed reduced emissions in both sectors would be enough to put the U.S. on the path of staying under the 2 degrees Celsius threshold. By 2030, under this cleaner energy scenario, as many as 175,000 premature deaths would be prevented in the U.S. and another 22,000 lives saved every year after. Under a cleaner transportation scenario, as many as 120,000 premature deaths in the U.S. were averted, with another 14,000 people saved each following year. The nationwide health benefits of reducing carbon emissions would total around $250 billion a year, which far exceeds the cost of implementing new, cleaner policies. Why flights between London and New York may soon be longer The possibility of transatlantic flights getting any longer is nothing anyone wants to hear. But a recent study by researchers at the University of Reading says that lengthier flights are becoming a real possibility due to climate change. Flights between New York and London could lengthen in response to changes in meteorological conditions in the atmosphere that affect the jet stream. Researchers say that as the atmosphere warms up due to global warming, the jet stream will become 15% faster during wintertime. The stronger jet stream will boost tailwinds, which may cause flights from New York to London to be shorter than the current 5 hours and 20 minutes. However, flights from London to New York are going against the jet stream, so trips may take more than 7 hours, making the overall round trip longer. Flights are expected to take a total of 2,000 hours longer each year, 
which means higher fuel costs and more CO2 emissions. The estimated increase in amount of CO2 emissions is equivalent to the annual CO2 output of 7,100 British homes. Scientists say that since this jet stream circles the globe, and because there's another in the southern hemisphere, it's possible that flights elsewhere in the world will be impacted by climate change. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Washington, D.C. could sink six or more inches by the end of the century. Scientists have confirmed that sea level in the Washington, D.C. area is rising faster than the rest of the East Coast, due not only to global warming, but also to a phenomenon called glacial isostatic adjustment of the land surface. Global warming is melting glaciers, which alone is likely to cause average global sea levels to rise anywhere from one to two and a half feet by 2100. Climate change, however, is also causing thermal expansion, which also results in sea level rise. A team of researchers drilled 70 boreholes, many over 100 feet deep into the ground around Chesapeake Bay, and were able to paint an expansive portrait covering millions of years of the body of water across time and space. The researchers discovered that the Washington, D.C. area's sinking also has a last ice age to blame, as the glacier covering the area at the time was heavy, causing the ground to sink beneath its weight. This resulted in the area bordering the ice to bulge upward and caused the D.C. area to sink, adding an additional half foot to the region's rise in sea level by the end of the century. Scientists do not expect this process to stop anytime soon, as they say it will continue for tens of thousands of years.